again. Um, my name's Rob Foster, and I am a generative AI enthusiast. So welcome back to my second webcast. Um, happy to see you back. If this is your first time, welcome. But um, I wanted to um, introduce this webcast as an extension to the first webcast that I did. So um, in the first webcast, what, what I did was introduce some very basic topics for how do you call these large language models if you want to extend from that breadth type of solution, which is like a Copilot or a Google Gemini or something like that, um, something that integrates with a tool that's, you know, a vendor tool, um, to something that's a little more niche to your business. So something that's more in the depth realm to where you can customize it, you can, you can teach it and give it prompts that are very niche to whatever you're trying to do. Um, and so in the first example, what we did was we started building basic prompts. And um, we wanted, I wanted to kind of introduce some concepts that I've learned, put it all together into something that makes sense and something that we can build off of. And so once you figure out actually how to um, to call the, the APIs and, and really start being able to, to pass this information in or these prompts into the large language models, that opens up a lot of power to you because then you just need to add little things on a time to make it really powerful. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So in today's example that we're going to walk through, what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the concept of you're reviewing uh, request for proposals. And what you can do is you want to be able to not only summarize these documents, but also submit winning bids or get information from the documents so that you know what you can need to submit to, to execute a winning bid for this proposal. I've done it with some public documents um, that are out there on the web. And um, looking into um, the state of Tennessee, I live in Tennessee, um, so in, in most states in the U.S., provide um, these open opportunities for, um, if you've got a company that has a specific skill set that the state's looking for, they put their RFPs on a website that you can go and, and start you know, downloading them and submitting the RFPs um, for, or start bidding on them. And so that's what this website is. And you can see I've got a bunch of RFPs out here that I can I can download. And I've downloaded three. Um, I'll probably just cover one in this example just because it's um, it's fairly small and, and, and everything. But um, this one that we're going to look at first is this one where they're actually looking for um, the Department of Correction is looking for some training. And they basically are looking for trainers um, to do that. So this is a PDF. It's, it's not too long. It's, it's six pages long. Um, so it's not it's not very long, but what I'm going to do is I want to um, I would like to go back and and take the exact code that we did that we used in the first video. Um, if you haven't seen the first video, it's a link to it below. Um, and um, what we're going to do is is extend that just a little bit to where the prompt we're going to use is basically going to read a PDF document. It's going to pass that PDF document as part of the prompt with a set of questions um, to, to actually run against the um, run against the document. So let's jump into VS Code um, and start looking at that right off the bat. So if you've if you followed along with the um, with the example before um, with my first video. Should look very. This should look very familiar to you because I literally just copied and pasted the file into a new file and just added a few more lines. So um, you know all of the things that were added with the libraries are the same except for PyPDF two because we're going to need to read PDFs. Um, this is just a, one of the li many libraries available in Python PyPDF two that's available to read um, read PDF uh, files. Um, all of these lines are the same here. We're still using the same library. So we're using stuff documents chain. We're using the large language model from Azure OpenAI. Um, we're going to be using GPT-4 Turbo for this. Um, and now here's where the differences start uh, coming in. 
So I've got a, I've got the document actually loaded into my file path here. So you can see it's right here. Um, so what I've done is I've created a doc path directory with the name of the file since it's in the same directory. And then I'm actually opening, this is all standard code, right? So I'm, I'm just opening the document with the PDF reader and then I'm extracting the text from the document into a variable called doc text. So basically read the PDF, pull all of the text from the PDF and put it into this doc text var variable. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a prompt that just says summarize this document. And then I'm going to put the RFP in here when we execute this prompt. Um, so all of these other lines are exactly the same. So we're setting up Azure chat open AI. We're setting that up as a large language chain, large language model chain with Azure open AI and the prompt template that we've got built. Um, then we're going to do the same thing with the stuff chain. We're going to basically pass in the document as a variable called text, which is right here, right in our prompt. Um, now here's, here's a key difference here is that we're, we're chunking it just slightly different. So, um, I believe in the last example, we used a thousand characters here. I'm upping that to a hundred thousand characters just so that I can get the whole document into the chunk, um, and, and start splitting that. Um, into a single chunk. So then I'm just going to go out there. I'm creating our documents from our chunk or from our, our from our doc text um, document. And then I'm just going to pass those documents into or that document into the large language model using the evoke method and then display the results. So again, we're summarizing the document. We're passing the document in here. And let's just run this right quick and see what happens. Okay, it just finished. And what we've done here is we basically just summarized the document. So you can see that it gave me the summary that, hey, this is an RFI submitted by the Tennessee Department of Correction. Here's the dates. Here's what they're seeking, blah, blah, blah. Just a basic summary. And you can see that it costs um, six cents to read that document, roughly, you know, almost seven cents. Uh, to read that document um, and provide this summary, um, I think this is great. It really does. Um, it really does give you a um, an opportunity to, um, to to start using your own data in a way that can help you be more effective. Like you could sit and read this document and pull this information out yourself, but you can see just in a few seconds we were able to quickly get to this um, get to this information. Now. One of the great things about this, because we're using a large language model, you know, our prompt, if we're going back into the prompt um, into here, so let's go back to our prompt template um, back up here. And you can see our prompt was really, really simple, um, about as simple as you can get. I'm just saying summarize this document. Now, what I, what I might want to do is I might want to give it a more advanced prompt because I might be looking for specific things out of these documents. Um, that are relevant to what I'm trying to do to submit a winning bid. So I'm just going to paste a prompt that I wrote here into the um, into the prompt window. And you can see this is a, um, it's a little bit more uh, detailed, right? And so this is going to allow us to get into some really deep, uh, deep information mining from these documents that uh, because we're giving it a very detailed prompt for saying, hey, here's exactly what I'm looking for. I know this is an RFP. Here's some context. And then here's the document. So you can see um, very first thing I'm doing is saying below is an RFP document. So I'm telling it this is a document that is an RFP, um, you know, so it, it's going to know inherently what that is. So the large language models know, know what, what an RFP is. And you're telling them that you need to respond to this. And I'm aiming to craft a winning bid. To achieve this, I require your assistance in thoroughly analyzing the document below. And then I start giving it some things that I want to extract out of here. So I want to create a summary for the document. So tell me what the summary is. Give me the primary objectives and goals, the scope of work, and any specific deliverables. Um, I want to know the compliance checklist. So tell me whether or what are the mandatory qualifications or certifications that are required for bidders, um, you know, or any spe specific, uh, specific legal or regulatory standards, you know, things that I need to know to be uh, compliant with this bid. Um, any evaluation criteria, so anything regarding pricing or quality or you know, how, how the solution should be built, the timelines and all of that. 
Um, I'm asking it to um, identify any questions that it has about the document. So if there's anything in the document that's ambiguous that might need some follow up, um, give me a list of questions that I can ask upon submitting like, hey, I need to know this more detail or follow up with this. Um, give me any strategic insights based on the analysis of the RFP. So any unique selling point or competitive advantages that the, we should highlight in our response, potential areas for partnership or collaboration and any innovative uh, approaches. List the schedule of events. So when are these things due? When's the project due? When's does the RFP due? All of that. Um, is there a risk assessment involved here? So it, it assess any potential risks um, or challenges identified by the RFP. Um, so highlight that so I'll know going in. And then the goal is to use this analysis to inform our proposal strategy, ensuring that our submission is not only compliant, but also um, is compelling and aligned to the issuer's needs and preferences. Um, so the below is the RFP. So you can see that before we got this kind of just basic summary. Um, now let's run it again and see exactly what we're going to get um, out of the um, out of the model. Okay, so it actually just finished, and you can see that now since we got really specific in our prompt. It gave us a really detailed um, answer, a response in, in return. So you can see now, here's the the objectives of the of the um, of what it, this is, um, what the RFP is. Here's the scope of work. Here's the specific deliverables that it outlines. Um, you know, compliance checklist, uh, and there aren't really any um, legal or regulatory standards um, mentioned in the documents, which tells you that. Uh, here's the format and deadline when, when this RF, uh, RFP should be responded to. Uh, you got your uh, required documentation forms that are needed, uh, evaluation criteria, questions and clarifications. Um, so this is, you need to, like the first thing it asks is, hey, there may be any some insurance requirements for the trainer. So you know, what, what are those? And, and you might need to follow up with the client for that or with the, the um, submitter for that. Um, strategic insights, here's the schedule of events, the risk assessment, and you can see that this didn't cost much more. It cost 10, uh, 10 cents roughly to, um, to execute this or almost 11 cents. Um, so it's really, really good uh, at, at exporting this information out. Now, um, what I've done here is I want to I wanna just look at this and as you start thinking about your prompting and um i want to talk a little bit about prompting for a second and um the prompting really is getting into the details the more detailed your prompts are the better results you're going to have so as you start thinking about prompting um you can see that we started you can back up to the video and, and watch we started with a very simple prompt that says give me a, just summarize this document for me which is great and it's very handy but as we started to get more more detailed and nuanced for what our answers needed to be, um, our prompts obviously got bigger, but we also got much, much better, more refined responses out of the large language model. So um, don't be afraid to experiment with prompts. Now, this was not my first uh, go at, at this prompt. I did several iterations to get to the information I wanted. Um, and you can also use large language models to help you um, uh, build these prompts out. So I actually used ChatGPT to help me. I just said, hey, I'm looking to submit or to respond to an RFP. I'm looking for a prompt that I can send it to ChatGPT along with a document. Can you help me? And I worked over several iterations um, with that to actually help refine the prompt. And that's actually how we got to the prompt that we have today uh, that I just showed you. So um, prompting is key. It's going to be key to this. And whether you build a prompt wizard into your applications or tools to help your, um, your, your end users, um, it's going to be important because it's going to really have a direct impact on how successful they are with using your system or not. So um, as you start building this, think about how people are going to start talking to this thing and asking it questions and give them help um, as, as needed as you can. Um, so um, I, now I want to extend this just slightly. I want to look at the basically the same example. And um, if you're a coder, and you're looking at this and this information, this looks great, right? I mean, this this is great, you understand this, but if you're trying to submit this idea or, or kind of uh, propose this idea to an executive team, 
they're going to hate looking and seeing anything related to any kind of code. And a lot of times when you pull up code, they, it, it tunes, uh, leadership t tends to tune out because they, you know, this, this is not, this doesn't matter. Um, and especially like the way this looks, right. It's just, it's all text. Um, and it's just a text output and it's great. It gives you this, you can copy and paste this out. Um, but I wanted to actually um, talk about as you start doing these ideas and you start building these things out to show to people, you can quickly and uh, very rapidly prototype um, a web experience around this. There's a um, there's a platform out here uh, that's part of Python called, called Streamlight. And um, this is not a Streamlight helper video, but I'll, I'll kind of give you some some tips here. Um, but but basically, Streamlight will help you quickly um, put your ideas to something that's way more visual than what you'd see in um, um, in, in just by pulling up VS Code and executing it. So you can see I'm, I'm, I'm creating a stream mod object here called ST. And then I'm setting things like the title of the of the web page. Um, I'm going to upload a file. So I'm going to say, hey, you know, only allow me to upload PDFs and I'm just going to be able to drag and drop these in. I don't have to write any other code, any other JavaScript or um, anything about that. I just I just basically set this up. This is all documented on Streamlight's uh, documentation, by the way. But you just set this up and you've got a file uploader. Um, and then you basically go in and do the same thing. You read the document um, and then you, instead of outputting or printing the response, I'm just writing this back to the page. So I'm just writing the, um, the response output text and then the tokens and cost and this. But other than that, it's roughly the same code. I mean, it's exactly the same code that we just, we just executed. So let's go down here and let's actually run this. So let's just say Streamlight run and it's RFP helper web. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually load up inside of, um, it's going to create a, a, a um, create a uh, virtual web server and it's going to load up inside of Chrome. And you can see that when we load it up, um, we can simply just drag and drop files up here. Um, and it will essentially just process those files, just the same as, as what we did with the um, with putting them in a string variable, but you just drag and drop your files into here. Now I'm gonna drag and drop a different one here. So this is the this is um, another RFP uh, for nurses aid testing for the state of Tennessee. Um, this is a little bit larger document. So you can see this document is 62 pages long, right? So it's, it's a pretty large document uh, for an RFP. And I've got my, um, I've got my uh, prompt is the same. So tell me all of the schedule of events and all of those things. It's all exactly the same. Jumping back over to VS Code to show you that, uh, you know, the prompt is, is the same as what we pasted in before. Uh, right. So you've got all of the, the summary creation, the checklist and the evaluation criteria, all of that. But um, going in now, let's just drag and drop that nurse's aid um, RFP into the um, into our web helper. And so I'm just going to drag and drop this in and it's going to run. So it's processing the document now. It's going to run, and we'll just wait and give it a second or so to um, to respond. And it'll just output the. It'll just print the stuff right down here on the page. Okay, and it just finished. So you can see I've actually got this. Um, there were some errors here because I did put it in Markdown, <laughs> but it. Um, it actually output this. So it's got the summary creation. Um, it's got the all of the things we've got here. It's got the compliance checklist um, for qualifications. It's got the evaluation criteria. Uh, any questions and clarifications that we've got, strategic insights, and then the schedule of events. Um, and the risk assessment. And it, it just put the, the total cost down bow as well. So um, it, it actually, um, it did a really good job of reading that and, um, and, and, and submitted that, but it did it in a way that you could actually show people. So if you're doing a demo of this, I would highly, highly recommend, uh, doing all your demos in a, in an environment that are, it doesn't freak anybody out. That's not a coder. So, um, so that's really, um, what I wanted to show you here, um, with, with that, um, building on this, uh, with, with our basic skills. Now, what's good about this? It just works, right? You paste the whole document in, uh, you ask questions, it responds. 
Now, there is somewhat of a, a bad thing that happens there, too, because your context, your, your documents are very large, your prompts are very large. So that can add up cost, right? If you're pasting in a prompt of 100,000 characters, that could add up cost. It does work with G GPT-4 Turbo because you can paste in, you know, 128,000 uh, tokens um, and, and uh, into the context of a, of a prompt, it'd be just fine. What happens, though, is that um, over time... That's just going to be, if you're processing a document multiple times, you're going to have to process the whole document each time you ask it a different question, right? So that's going to add up in costs. So what we're going to cover in the next set of video or next video is called um, vectorizing these documents. And this really is the core of retrieval augmented generation, where we're going to do pretty much exactly the same thing we just did, except we're going to load our document into a vector database as chunks of the document. And I'll figure out what the chunk sizes are, and we'll talk about that. And then we'll start asking questions about this document. And then what we'll do is we'll first ask questions about the, uh, about the document to the vector data database to say, give me relevant chunks of the document that makes sense to whatever I'm trying to ask. And so now instead of the whole document that we have to pass in, it might return four paragraphs. This says, here's the four paragraphs that contain all the information you need to build the answer to this question. And then you only send those four paragraphs off to the, um, to the large language model. And that's going to significantly shrink the size of your prompting that you have to do, which is obviously gonna impact costs. So if you're doing this in a very high flow scenario, you've got a bunch of people uh, wanting to respond to RFPs or whatever you're doing with documents, um, you want to minimize that cost as much as possible. And this is really um, the next video is where we're going to get into that. And that's, that's going to really round us out into the retrieval augmented generation. So we started out building the basic skills for how do you query this, um, how do you query the large language models. Now we're starting to pass documents and prompts in to the large language models as a whole. Um, and then again, in the third video, we're going to go into vectorizing these documents and passing chunks of the documents that's in. So that's all I wanted to cover today. Um, uh, please reach out to me if you have any questions. You can find me on LinkedIn, um, but i um, happy to answer any questions you have. And um, But anyway, until the next video, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're getting value from this series and um, we'll see you in a, about a week or so.